analyst says we're unlikely to see that magnitude while the market is pricing in six or more rate cuts. He thinks we could see fewer than three. For some perspective on why and what that means for equity markets, let's bring in Michael Purvis, Chief Executive Officer at Tallback and Capital Advisors. Michael, talk to me about the pushback that you are you are you are pushing back on this market expectation when it comes to the magnitude of the rate cuts we're going to see. Look, I, I think, you know, we've seen six or more rate cuts priced in back uh, in late March of last year uh, after the regional bank crisis erupted uh, there. And those got those got straightened out again, too. I think it's a very speculative call to, to think that we're going to get six six uh, rate cuts. It's, it's effectively saying that it's not just about, oh, you know, inflation falling. It's that the economic data is going to really fall apart at some point. Uh, in the next year, um, uh, there. So, look, I think I think right now there's a very good case to have one to two, maybe three real. Uh, I'm sorry, one to two or maybe three rate cuts. But um, that's really, I think, to sort of proactively manage real rates from getting too high with inflation continuing to fall. If you go back and look at the economic the trajectory of economic data, you know, it continues to be. Um, generally, pretty good. You know, it, it seems to be painting a path to, that we're the uh, the the consumer is in is, is the, I call it the worker slash consumer is in pretty good shape. He's getting uh, he or she's getting uh, uh, wage gains. Uh, gasoline prices are lower. Food prices uh, we'll find out more later this week on food prices, but we we should see those uh, starting to come in. Uh, shelter costs are subsiding and so forth. And on top of that, you don't have the ten year at five percent. You have it now down around four mm-hmm. percent. And of course, across the curve, and all that stuff is is, is sort of conspiring to sort of sort of engender. I think what's going to be a pretty pretty decent um, economic picture there. So why are we going to? Why would the Fed get rate? Uh, you know, six rate cuts. At the same time, this some of this last mile issues of getting two and below two uh, percent Fed funds. Uh, sorry, Fed target is uh, is going to be tricky there. So I think I, I'm certainly not in the camp that we're getting more hikes or a, a violent recessionary uh, inflationary bounce. But I think the trajectory lower on inflation is going to be um, not, you know, sort of a bout of, of deflation, but more sort of a gradual trend lower there. So I, I, I think this is what I call a tweaking cycle rather than a cutting cycle. So because it your view also implies that the economic backdrop is not as bad. Should investors not be fearful about only three rate cuts? In fact, should that be the story that they're leaning into? Well, yeah, I think that's a really good question. So, you know, if, if you really do think six uh, or so cuts are coming. I don't know if you really want to be bullish equities. You know, we had that 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 bullish pivot. Uh, I'm sorry, that dovish pivot from the Fed um, meeting in December there, and everyone was rah rah um, there. But I think the bond market, the rates futures markets, got a little bit too excited here in this whole six cuts there. Because if if, we, if you really are in six cuts, I think you're effectively saying. And it's not just inflation cooling, it's economic uh, growth data really falling apart and unemployment back up from the high fours or something like that um, there. And I just don't see the case for that. So I think on the other hand, let's say let's say I'm right and we do get more like, you know, the sort of one to two, maybe three cuts uh, there. You're going to see this enduring tension as the, you know, and I think you're already seeing it a little bit just this year. The Fed has been sort of walking back some of the dovish love from December um, there, and the equities are kind of processing this a, a little bit. There is an, a little bit of tension here, right? Because the financial conditions will uh, get a little more tense um, as the Fed walks back. Uh, and, and the market walks back six to th- you know two to three cuts. Um, there, that's going to be a little bit of a tension, but I don't think it's a big, big uh, tension. And I think equities um, will be able to you know generally be in a pretty constructive position in that environment. There, I don't look Let, at that. Let's talk um, positioning as, though as within those. Sorry, let's talk positioning, though, within those uh, equities. There's those in the rotation camp. There's those that are sticking with those tech players. How do you think about the characteristics of leadership for 24? 
That's a, that's another uh, really, really important question. Look, I, I think, you know, right now, I, I call this condition right now sort of dual uh, or twin Goldilocks, right? Like, in other words, we got the dovish pivot from the Fed. It's not a perfect pivot in a way, but uh, but it, but it's 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 a pivot nonetheless. The, the Fed's gone from talking about rate hikes to talking about rate cuts, right? Um, so that's constructive for the markets, uh, broadly speaking. At the same time, I'd say Main Street is in a Goldilocks condition too, where real wages are going up, uh, nominal wages are going up, um, employment uh, markets are strong, and gasoline prices are lower. A lot of key uh, 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 prices are lower across the spectrum of inflation. There, that's good for Main Street, and, and so you have the sort of Main Street Goldilocks meeting Wall Street Goldilocks at the same time. Now, what that means is that sets the table for the rotation trade, but it means risk is going to stay on and probably that the uh, you, you want to um, uh, think about allocating into cyclicals. With all that said, one thing that I'm concerned about the rotation is that the earnings growth, we have not seen great earnings growth out of the cyclical um, part of the market over the last 12 months. And so earnings seasons are going to start very soon. And if that doesn't, if that kind of earnings trajectory kind of fizzles out again, I don't think it's going to be bad. I just don't know whether it's going to be, you know, markedly up, right? Because we have had PE expansion in cyclicals um, uh, uh, over the last year. In fact, more so than you have had in big tech. And I think that's one of the things the market's missing. Everyone thinks big tech is all multiple <laughs> expansion, but actually, the multiple expansion is much more on the cyclical side there because the big tech, you know, the Magnificent Seven, they've actually grown into their earnings growth. So one way to think about this is look at the price earnings to growth ratios, right? If you look at that ratio for, for the Magnificent Seven, it's about 1.4 based on Bloomberg uh, consensus bottoms up estimates for those stocks. If you look at it for the SPX equal weight, which is kind of a cyclical <laughs> proxy for everything else, it's at 1.8, right? So, so it's not necessarily cyclicals are dirt cheap on valuation mm. they're good investments if the earnings start performing and 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 that's really the key question um there